Good morning, everybody. Happy Monday. Happy fall. It is officially the start of cozy season. So it is super appropriate that we are continuing work on our granny square cardigan today. I'm going to make some sleeves. Uh, I want to welcome you all here. I hope you all had a great weekend. And before we get started, I just want to say that last Monday, Deanna popped into the shop and mentioned that we were talking about beads and buttons, I should say, in the chat last week. Um, she said, wouldn't it be cute if you had candy corn buttons for the Halloween cardigan? And that made me think of our tiny treat amigurumi pattern from a few years ago, 2019, I think. Um, we have a live stream in which we made three different little tiny treats and an actual tutorial in which we made two more. The misters got those linked down below. I just thought these would be the perfect buttons. You can treat them like a button and sew them on like you would any kind of covered button. I just think they're so stinking cute. Um, the only change I made to the original pattern was that I used a smaller hook because I wanted a slightly tinier uh, little button. But you can adjust that tiny treat amigurumi pattern we did uh, up or down by using lighter weight yarn and a smaller hook for something smaller or heavier weight yarn and a bigger hook for something bigger. Um, I used the same yarn I've been using for my sweater, so size 4 medium weight acrylic and a 4.5 millimeter or a G6 hook just to make them a little bit smaller and, and kind of oversized button size but I think those are gonna I'm gonna make three of them in total but I just wanted to say those are the buttons I'm gonna use so if you wanted to make some for yourself uh, we've got five different versions to check out and we have a pattern that includes all five of them in our Etsy shop it's up in the featured listings so if you pop over to our Etsy shop you'll see it right up top and we've got it on sale for 50% off so if you want to give these a try <laughs> Um, I, I'm going to make those. I'm, we've got a ghost, we've got a witch, we've got a little wizard, we've got a Frankenstein, and we've got this little candy corn. Um, they're just so dark cute. I was thinking maybe one of each would be really cute all the way down the front of the sweater, but I'm going to stick with the candy corns because I love that idea. Um, so thanks to Deanna for the, uh, for the reminder that um, we've got this little pattern. So those are going to be the buttons and um, I'll be adding those, not today, but later, but I thought if you wanted to add your own, we'd give you the heads up, because that's what I'm doing. So that is the buttons. <laughs> but today we're going to focus on the sleeves of our sweater. And um, I'm going to work the granny straight stitch in purple. I'm going to make my sleeves predominantly purple. I'm going to add in a couple of extra granny squares at the bottom and then we'll be doing trim but the trim will probably be another day I'm going to see if I can at least get one sleeve made today and if I can I'll do the other sleeve um, on my own because it'll be identical to the one I do so I'm hoping I can get through that today um, I'm aiming for a sleeve length of about 18 inches and this is already 6 inches so I need to crochet um, 12 inches worth of sleeve today so that is today's goal and I want to just take a moment to thank Nico for gifting a membership before we got going today thank you Nico for your amazing support Alma won it congratulations Alma welcome to the family Mr. and Stitches is here and while Mr. and Stitches says hello to everybody I'm going to start sorting myself out to start working on those sleeves <laughs> we do love our lurkers um, oh, you know what? I'm just going to show you. Oh my gosh! Deanna! <laughs> Thank you! Thank you, Deanna! Deanna's picked up a pattern or two. Uh, I also thought I'd, I'd better mention we, we've got... <laughs> Marie! Thank you, Marie! We've got the whole shop uh, on sale 10% off additionally. So our little tiny treat pattern. Look at this. Look how freaking cute this is going to be. Um, these little, This one's 50% off, but the whole shop, uh, in addition to that, is 10% off. So... Um, <laughs> Thank you both for your support. Um, I haven't done in the trim yet, and obviously I haven't created the buttonholes, um, but that's how it's basically going to look. This is just going to be so cute. <laughs> ah, Halloween cardigan. I can't believe I never made one before. All right, so that's, that's the buttons. I'm going to get started on the actual sleeves. So this is the top of my... This is the top of my, my, what I've got so far as a vest. So that's the neck started. We did the trim to kind of build out the front um, last time. 
I'm just enjoying these buttons again. <laughs> um, and I'm going to start working off one side. So I'm going to do the straight granny um, stitch and I'm going to do it across the edge of the sleeve before I join up the side. Um, I had done a little bit of measurements earlier and these are six inches so if I only did across these two sleeves um, or if I did um, I should say across these two squares or if I did two rows of granny squares down this side to be my sleeves they would be 12 inches in circumference and that's fine for me but I also think I might want to wear like a light sweater underneath this <laughs> Oh, thank you, Nico. <laughs> Nico's just picked up a pattern or two or three at our shop. Thank you so much, Nico. <laughs> oh, this is gonna... oh, thank you, Joanne. <laughs> oh, my gosh. You guys are wonderful. <laughs> Holy smokes, Joanna. Thank you. <laughs> okay, I swear to God, I'm going to stop giggling. Wow. <laughs> thank you, guys. It's cozy season. It's 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 cozy season. It's the, the little, time to. Uh, the, little, the little tiny treats. It is yes. It is it is a uh, time to indulge in our favorite pastime. I I I myself. It's definitely the best season for cozy. Yes. Um, <laughs> oh, um. I also I was toying with the idea of using the little bumblebee that we we made a forever ago on the channel as the buttons, but I thought that these would just be a little more. Halloweeny. I am going to still include bumblebees on this sweater somewhere because this is the booby cardigan. But <laughs> okay, back to the sleeve. Um, I was thinking about working back and forth across just these two squares to make a 12 inch long sleeve or a 12 inch circumference sleeve, but I want something a little wider. So I'm actually going to work um, about two shells down into the next square on both sides. So I'm just going to. Put Sorry, everyone. I forgot to unmute my mic again. Oh my gosh! I tend to do that a lot. <laughs> well, at least you didn't. I was I was very concerned about unmuting Jada's mic, and I forgot <laughs> to unmute my mic. So, hello, everyone, and welcome. I was just going on and on about how I thought how cute I thought the little um, tiny treats would make as buttons. I love that idea. Yeah. Um, and you could, I mean, the candy corns look awesome, but you could do any any one of those as buttons. Yes, any one of them. Any one also, of them. Also, can I say your ugly Halloween sweater is not looking ugly at all? It's getting a little too cute. It's starting to look kind of cute, yeah. I know, especially with those buttons. I, this is just <laughs> going to be so cute. I also think the ghosts would have been really cute, and they would have stood out nicely For because sure. they're, they're bright white. Any one white. of those, but I, I like the candy corn. I like the yeah. candy corns too, and it brings that yellow back in. Um, okay, so I've just pinned, or I've put little stitch markers down at the far edge of the second shell into the second um, square down the front of my sleeve. So I just folded it in half again. This is the shoulder seam up here. So you can sort of see that this would be the opening of my sleeve. So it's going to be a little bit bigger in circumference than what would originally have just been the two squares, because I want to be able to wear a, a small sweater underneath this, and I want enough space in the armhole that I'm not going to feel like it's being bunched up. So I'm going to work the straight granny shell stitch just like I did for the front back and forth from this point to the exact same mirror image point on the back. Uh, back and forth, back and forth. <laughs> Krista, thank you! <laughs> thank you so much, Krista! And that's going to be the length of my sleeve. I think that's going to give me maybe um, a circumference of 18 inches all the way around. So that'll be nice and wide. And then I'll be seaming up the edge of my, the side of my uh, sweater and the bottom of my sleeve at the same time. And if that sounds a little confusing, don't worry. I'm gonna show that uh, when I get to it, but I am going to jump right into getting this crochet going because I really wanna try and get one sweater sleeve done today. And it's just more of that lovely straight shell stitch. You could use more granny squares if you wanted, but I want just a slightly wider sleeve and I'm going for kind of a custom size. So this way I don't actually have to make bigger granny squares or feel confined by tinier granny squares. I can actually just make um, a solid colored sleeve. I might add the same striping down towards the edge, uh, but I'll see when I get there. And I'm going to start with a 
slip stitch in the top of that last stitch of the shell. So you see how there's a seam between my squares. There's a shell, there's a shell. <laughs> Thank you, Janet. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to start here with the chain four, which counts as a double crochet chain one, skip over top and into this space here and then work the shell stitch. And I'm gonna treat the seams like I've been treating them um, all along. So when I get to, now am I joining, I'm chaining one in between shells. When I get to a seam, instead of using the corner space of this square or the corner space of this square, I'm gonna use the actual seam. So I'm gonna make sure that I get underneath that yarn for the seam. Um, I would like to re-welcome Selena Salinas for rejoining our membership. And also I wanted to answer, um, Little Miss Jennifer's question, how long is the sale on for? I think it goes till Thursday. Yes, it goes till Thursday. It goes till Thursday, yes. so you have four days. Re-welcome to Salinas and a re-welcome to Sherry. <laughs> Thank you both. So I'm going to work that granny shell stitch pattern of the shells, which is three double crochet. And then I'm using the chain one in between just to give me a little bit of breathing room. And when I put one in the seam, <laughs> Cheryl, thank you. Oh my goodness, what a busy little shop we have today. I better put on another pot of coffee. <laughs> oh, I'll take another uh -huh. another cup of coffee. Yeah, you will. I will would, you? absolutely. Yeah, you know, I think today is a double pot day. <laughs> it's a bit it's a bit breezy. It's, it's, cool, it's cool and breezy. Breezy and cool. I am watching the clouds as well as the birds fly by out there. It is very fallish. It is, it is so deliciously fallish. I, uh, I am in absolute cozy mode here. So I'm very, very motivated to get this, this uh, Halloween inspired cardigan finished because there are so many other little cozy projects that I want to get to. So as soon as I have this first row of the granny shell stitch complete, it'll, I'll be able to show you folded in half how it's going to look as the beginning of the sleeve. So if you're having trouble kind of just putting together in your head how this is going to work. This is basic garment construction. Um, I want people to, if you've never made clothing for yourself, I want you to sit yourself down and tell you that it's not terrifying or confusing. Uh, you know, there is, there's, it's not difficult to make a sweater or anything really to, to fit the body. Most original clothing was made just out of a series of squares and rectangles. Christine, thank you. And uh, all this is, is just basically rectangles and squares. And that's all you need to get started. And once you start making a handful of, of sweaters, then you'll understand the concept and you'll start getting more comfortable with little nuanced shaping details and all the little goodies that come with making haute couture clothing. But it is not difficult and I don't ever want anyone to sort of worry that it's gonna to be too difficult, because it's not. Welcome, Marie, welcome back to Alpaca. Thank you so much for renewing your membership. I'm going to just pull up on that loop on my hook and I'm going to keep that stitch marker there and I'm going to refold my cardigan so that you can sort of see how it's going to look. So I'm just working back and forth and back and forth. I'm creating a rectangular um, shape built directly onto the side of my cardigan. Let's lay that out flat. So once again, here I am, there's the, the, the top neck opening uh, starting. This is a vest-like construction because I haven't added any sleeves yet. It opens at the front because it's a cardigan. And now I'm working that straight granny shell stitch back and forth and back and forth. And it's going to get longer and longer out the side. So I'm just gonna pin those two little ends of the row together. And it's going to grow and grow and grow out the edge and that will leave this side of my, so here's the, the sort of the, what's gonna be the, the armpit and that's gonna leave the rest of the side of my sweater open and that will be a seam. So I'll be seaming up there and then eventually I'll be seaming all the way under the, the bottom of my Okay, sleeve. so I, uh, I'm gonna go make that second pot of coffee but mm -hmm. I have a, uh, a message for everyone. I need all the lurkers out there to behave while I'm gone. 
The lurkers must behave. <laughs> no trolling from the lurkers. Hurry up and go make that cup of coffee. <laughs> okay. I finished with a... Every row of the straight granny shell stitch begins and ends with the same thing. So if it started with a double crochet, it ends, or started with a chain three, it ends with a double crochet because the chain three counts as a double crochet. If it starts with a shell, it ends with a shell. So you chain three, turn your work. So now we're going to work back across that sleeve. I'm going to work two more double crochet. Oh my gosh, Dizzy! Thank you, thank you, Dizzy. Dizzy's picked up a pattern at the shop. Two more double crochet into that first space there that completes the first shell, chain one, and then it's just a, st a single shell or three double crochet, chain one in every space all the way across. And I'm gonna just zoom through here. We have a tutorial on the straight granny shell stitch. Um, if you want to see that in a little bit better detail and also sort of in a, a more concise tutorial. Did I miss some action? No, I don't think so. Are the lurkers behaving? <laughs> Keep an eye on them. I can't crochet and keep an eye on the we lurkers have, at the same time. We have a couple of trolls out there. <laughs> I hope we have a bunch of trolls out there. <laughs> our, our crafty trolls are the best. <laughs> I love the shell stitch because it is fast. I'm just looking for a space. I don't have to count my stitches too much. Once you get into the habit of working three double crochet over and over and over again, it gets, it, it almost becomes second nature. And when I switch from say a three double crochet pattern to something that's like a two stitch, like a two double crochet or something a little more elaborate, like elaborate, like a five or seven shell, uh, five or seven double crochet scallop, I, 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 I trip up constantly because my brain just wants to do three double crochets and then move on, three double crochets and then move on. <laughs> but it's quick, it's quick. I still feel that the double crochet stitch is the fastest for me. I seem to be able to do that one quicker than a single crochet. She says, stalling out by slipping her hook out of her stitch. <laughs> so I'm coming to the second row. I'm going to work a, oh my gosh, Woohoo! Judith, thank you so much, Judith. Judith has picked up a pattern at our Etsy shop. I'm going to work a couple more rows of this um, shell stitch pattern. I don't think I need my stitch marker anymore. And then I'm going to measure to kind of give myself an idea of how deep I need to go. I'm thinking I'm going to need to do, um, Let's see here, one, two, three, four, five. I think I'm gonna to need to do 10 rows to get to 12 inches of the granny shell stitch back and forth. I think um, it should be the same, um, exact same gauge as the straight stitch I did on the front of the granny cardigan a couple episodes ago or last episode, I guess. Um, but just to make sure that I'm not changing anything. I am going to do a couple of rows and then I will fold it back in half, take a look at it, measure it, because uh, I think 18 inches is what I want. So I'm chaining three, but I want to chain four because that counts as a double crochet, chain one, and I'm immediately jumping into this space and working my first shell. So this row starts and finishes with what I call a post. Every other row starts and finishes with a complete shell. And that's how you get that nice straight edge and a straight granny shell stitch worked back and forth, nice and fast, matches the granny square and it lets me create a sleeve size that is custom and not necessarily dependent on a granny square. And when I get to the bottom of the sleeve and I want to um, cuff it, so to speak, with the addition or the existing granny squares I have, I'm just gonna cheat um, the whole size of the, the sleeve edge into the smaller size of the connected granny squares. And I, I'm, I'll show you what I mean when I get there. Hopefully I'll get that done today. Got a nice busy chat. I can see everybody chit chatting and the chat's zooming along. Thank you guys so much for being here. I missed that last pattern purchase. Who was that? That was Judith. Judith, big thank you to Judith. I do love Mondays now that we all hang out together and do some crafting. 
Crocheting with friends is the best, even if it's virtual. <laughs> I can fit more of you in the craft room with me when it's virtual. <laughs> I can barely fit the mister in here with me when it's, when it's real life. <laughs> Oh, I hear the coffee maker going. I can't wait. It's definitely another cup of coffee kind of day. I should put the microphone next to the coffee maker. Little Get that gurgling amplified. Crochet ASMR or whatever yeah. that is. <laughs> <laughs> and double crochet in the top of the final thing. Let's turn our work, get another row in, and then I'm gonna see where we're at. So two more double crochet into that first space that completes the shell because this row will start and finish with a shell. So starts with a post, starts with a shell, starts with a post, starts with a shell. I'm so glad I found this purple yarn that just happens to match the almost exactly the purple that I used for my original granny squares forever ago. That is a really happy thing to have happen. Oops. I saw the cutest thing just before the live stream got going. I was looking out the window and I was musing about the fact that the cool weather is coming and the breezes are sort of rustling the tops of the trees and I was gazing out the window and I saw this beautiful great big blue jay land just sort of off the edge of the lawn and it had a big peanut in its mouth. Peanut's still in the shell. I just fed them before we, we went live. And I thought, oh, look at you. Look at you, your big peanut. And he jumped down to the ground stuffed it into the grass, picked up a leaf and covered it with a leaf. And I thought, oh my gosh, look at you, you're stashing. And I realized that there was another blue jay standing up in the trees, just a little bit beyond him. I thought, surely you must know that other blue jay is there. So this blue jay buries the peanut in the lawn, covers it with a leaf and takes off. And the other blue jay immediately swoops down, uncovers it, <laughs> picks up the leaf, tosses it aside, digs out the peanut and flies off with the peanut. And I thought, I know what's happening here. These are the yearlings who are still being taught little tricks for survival from their parents. So that parent, Blue Jay, very obviously hid a peanut in front of its child and, and said, this is how you look for things because the squirrels <laughs> bury peanuts like that all the time. They'll stuff it under a leaf because <laughs> they're in such a, a panicked hurry to find more food and, and stash it. And this, this Blue Jay was showing its child how to go looking for things under leaves. It was just so fantastically fascinating. I was absolutely mesmerized. <laughs> we have a question from Dawn about the um, Fair Isle style blanket sure. series, I believe. What's up? Can you see it on your screen? Let me see. Um, uh, Jada, I'm finally on the February strip of the calendar blanket and my graphs are off by two stitches. What can I do? All right, so if your graphs are not lining up, it's because you've um, either skipped a stitch or accidentally worked into an existing stitch twice, or maybe you've added a stitch in somewhere. Um, if it's out of alignment and it bothers you, I do recommend taking it out and redoing it. Um, if you don't want to take it out and you think, well, it's, it doesn't really matter that it's a little bit out of alignment, then when you go to work the next strip, the March strip, which is a connecting series of tiles, just be very cognizant to make sure you've got 120 stitches and that you're not accidentally adding in or removing or whatever your multiple of 20 is. I'm going with six uh, repeats of the 20 stitch graph, so 120 stitches for me. Um, if you're doing 120 stitches also, make sure that you've got exactly 120 stitches because that tessellating tile pattern that we use in March really depends on that. Um, that will get you back to normal. It will be a solid connecting pattern all the way across. And then you can just start in April with the next set of graphs and just make sure that they're properly spaced. And if you've got a slight, you know, wobble to your... Um, the existing pieces of your 
like the, the images in your pattern, don't worry about it too much. So if it doesn't bother you, don't bother taking it out. Just make sure that you, you default back to 120 stitches and continue from there. Um, if it does bother you, take it out and do it again. I know that can be frustrating, but um, if, if little things like that bother you, like I can be bothered by that sometimes. I will take work out and redo it. Um, but some other times I'm like, nah, it doesn't really bother me. I don't, I don't mind. As long as all of the images are evenly spaced, I just kind of chalk it up to, you know, a, a, a little unique quirk of the blanket that I'm making. So, um, so those are your, your best options and it depends on your personal choice. If you want to spend a little extra time redoing it, that's cool. If not, that's cool too. This is the sleeve now shaping up. You can really see it. So this is the side edge of my cardigan and then it curls into the sleeve and the sleeve that's the armpit and then when I stitch up the edge of my cardigan I will continue stitching along the bottom of my sleeve so my sleeve is going to be made in one piece and it's a little bit bigger than just the the width of a single granny square which gives me a little more space in the armpit and I like that um, you can of course make them much longer you could make them all the way down to here like a bat wing if you wanted uh, but I think that that's going to be big enough for me that will be a um, an armhole opening of probably 14 to 16 inches, I'm going to guess. Um, but let's measure it. So, Nicole! Nicole, a member for 27 months as a Vicuña. Thank you so much, Nicole. Says, happy Monday. I am glad that I can join today. We are too. I have been working on some mini mini oh falling leaves stockings and one big one i love that pattern that one is so pretty i better drink all my water since mr and stitches is making me coffee coffee's almost ready okay let me grab my measuring tape so this is going to be 16 and a half inches in circumference so that is the length of the edge of my sleeve and when that's turned into a sleeve it will be at least 16 and a half inches I say at least because there's always a little bit of give in a shell stitch pattern, so it might stretch out a little bit. Um, that's perfect. That'll give me lots of nice movement in the armpit so I can wear a, a thin little sweater underneath this if I want to. And so far, my one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, four rows. So I've got to start here and go to about there. Uh, two and a half inches. So four rows of the shell stitch is two and a half inches and I want to get to at least 12, but I might be putting in a couple of other, um, a couple of other rows of color. So I'm going to work this for a little while. I'm just going to double check that 18 inches is what I'm looking for. So I'm going to put this as close to the edge of my wrist as possible. I'm not sure if you'd be interested, but there's a fresh pot of coffee. Oh, you're going to tease me now? About I don't know, a few feet away from you right now. <laughs> I'm coming. Where's your Where's your mug? It's right here. I will Hang serve on. you. you oh, let me finish my water then. Same mug? Water mug? Yes, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, I'm just going to measure from my wrist-ish. So that's about where I want the very edge of my trim. To go so I've got to keep all this in mind while I'm measuring out so all the way up to about here so 20 inches is about the length from my wrist to about the where the edge of my granny square the vest part of my cardigan is going to end so I need to fill 20 inches and I'll probably fill about an inch to an inch and a half with trim then this is going to be at the end of the sleeve and that's six and a half inches. So seven and a half, eight, eight inches from 20 gives me 16. So I need to do 16. Ooh, thank you. Look at this. Look at this service. Look at that premium. It's premium <laughs> coffee. Put my finger Don't in Don't you it. dare. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> oh, 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 it's hot. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> All right. So I need to do about... What did I just say? 16 inches of the granny shell stitch before I start working in the granny squares and before I start um, considering the trim at the bottom. So I've got a little ways to go. 
Uh, chain four turn. And whatever I do, I'm going to write down the number, uh, the final number of shell stitch rows that I do on the sleeve. And if I do any color patterning, I think I might, I might mimic it, uh, what I did in the front panel. I might do that too, just for some interest sake. Um, I will write that down so that when I go and I make sleeve number two, they will be identical. All right, so off I go. I've got several rows of this shell stitch to do. Nico has just gifted another membership. Thank you so much, Nico. <laughs> and Crochet Crazy has won it. <laughs> Congratulations. Christina asks, do you have a video on the seashell stitch? We have several videos that include seashell stitch related, um, like the seashell or scallop or large fan. Um, we have that incorporated into many, many, many different um, stitch patterns. One we have, there's a seashell, uh, we, we have a mile a minute seashell pattern. Um, we did a Ooh, uh, we did a festive table runner that uses a um, a large fan or a sort of a seashell um, style. There are so many patterns out there that are called seashell or a variation of the seashell stitch because it's basically just a very wide fan or a wide wider shell stitch. Um, so it kind of depends on the project that you're thinking about including it in. Uh, but yes, um, if you look up Jada and Stitch's seashell, they should all pop up. And that is how many rows? One, two, three, four, five rows so far. Would someone in the chat like to uh, let Unique Amazing Stripes know what the name of our sweater is, please? <laughs> Yes, the, the named, the sweater who, who, which has been named by the community. Kimberly, good morning, Jada and Mr. and Stitches and everyone. And good morning to you, Kimberly. Thank you for the super chat. Tanya got it. Marie says, uh, G, Jada, Jada, you do of going, what? I love your videos, Jada. Thank you. Do you, do you do of going yarn haul shopping? And I was wondering, oh, I love the videos you do of going yarn haul shopping. I was wondering if you would be doing that again. Well, we just did one. Um, we did a haul. That was, was this that, that this past Friday? Yeah. The most recent was, um, this Friday. It yeah. It was, uh, four days ago. It was a, an online haul. Yeah. Um, That's the most recent. I think we have a playlist of um, shopping uh, yeah, yarn hauls. we definitely do. Um, I typically go yarn shopping when I need to. <laughs> um, I can sometimes have my arm twisted if there's a really fantastic sale going, like uh, the one we had on Friday. That was a Lens Mill um, sale on discontinued yarns, which was just too good to pass up, especially because I, I, they were selling off a lot of discontinued colors of yarns that I use regularly. Um, so that was a, that was just a great deal all the way around. Um, but I, I typically try to just go yarn shopping when I actually need something. I know that's probably a bit <laughs> counterintuitive when you're obsessed with crochet and all things yarny. Uh, but I have such a collection from having collected it for about 30 years or so that um, I, and, and limited space that I, I have to be kind of thoughtful about the yarn that I get. So uh, I promise, though, if I do a yarn shopping tour, we will definitely bring you guys along for the fun. Lala! Hi, Lala! Lala's been a member for 57 months as a silk. Thank you, Lala. Hello, y'all. Lurking, listening at work. Please hit the bell. Always the thumbs up and comment after the video because it's a replay. Thank you. When it becomes a replay, it helps the algorithm for the channel. Thank you, Lala. It's so true. Apparently YouTube says, oh, oh, people actually like this. Oh, okay. Well, maybe somebody else would. And they, <laughs> they help share it. It ends up in people's home feed where they may not accidentally, or they may not see us usually. Oh, 
I thought the lens mill deal was amazing. I was so happy and excited with that. Like I said in the video, I haven't picked up that much of anything for 60 bucks in such a long time. I was delighted. And this purple I'm using was um, a discontinued color. I got two of them and now I'm sorry that I didn't get three or four because it's exactly the same color as the purple from my previous granny squares and it's it's so rich. I love it. So um, pretty happy with the way that worked out. I love this color. Purple I found so, I had such trouble finding purple this year. Um, and finding finding it in the kind of yarn that I wanted. Sometimes I'll see purple yarn, but it's, you know, it's not in the specific yarn that I'm looking for. Oh, Lala, oh my goodness, Lala with a super chat too. Thank you so much, Lala, it's a super sticker. And we're getting a, a <laughs> we're getting a kiss blown at us. Thank you so much. <laughs> That's so cute. I do like the speed of this. I'm really hoping that I can get this done today so you can all see how this sleeve is going to work out. And then I will do number two on my own because it'll be exactly the same. Uh, but we shall see. We'll see how far we get. And end with a double crochet. All right. It is, um, so there's, there's the original purple and there's the new purple. Um, I, I honestly can't see a difference. It's so darn close. I would, if I didn't know better, I'd say, I, I wouldn't say that there was any difference at all. Um, so this might be, the new purple might be literally one tiny hue shade digital, <laughs> digital pixel of grape darker but uh, I, I honestly can't see a difference. So I'm just, it's, I'm, it's so minute. I don't think you'd ever notice. And I, I'm really happy about that because um, I'm kind of excited to have a mostly purple video. <clears throat> mostly purple sweater. Did I say video? <laughs> I think you said video. Yes. I think I said video. I need a purple more. video. That that'd be fine too. A mostly purple video. Just the purple screen. I wonder for how that would look. Minutes or so. A mostly purple video. <laughs> um, there was a question from Nico. Will you be going all the way to your wrist? I'm going to go down about um, 16 inches, Nico, and then I'm going to finish the sleeve off with. Um, these two granny squares. I'm gonna think I'm gonna put this one on the front and this one on the back. So this will be kind of like a big fancy cuff down around here, and then there'll be a little bit of trim, just sort of cinching in the bottom of the of the granny square. So I've got a wider sleeve coming down to about where my granny. So, so sleeve will come down here, and it's gonna gather just a little bit along the the this edge of the granny squares, and then the granny squares themselves are gonna be cinched in just a little bit with um, a bit of trim, just so I don't have a big sleeve flopping around, um, and I can you know roll it up if I have to, you know when we're doing the dishes and stuff. <laughs> so that's the plan, um, and since I think I'm gonna have around an inch and a half or so of trim. And these are already six and a half inches long. And my target sleeve measurement is about 20 inches in total. Then I need about 16 inches worth of the straight granny shell stitch. That's what I'm working with right now. We'll see. Um, if you're making this for yourself, I recommend just regularly trying it on. You know, work a few rows, try it on, see how it looks. Work a few more rows, try it on, see how it looks. Whenever you're making clothing to fit yourself, this is one of the luxuries of being able to make something to fit. You don't have to make the whole garment and then try it on. You know, try it on, pin pieces together, you know, pin where you think a tuck might look better, take out a row and maybe make it a little tighter or a little looser in places. There are no rules when you're making clothes for yourself. 
There's a question from Salinas. Do you have any ideas on how to add sleeves to a primrose stitch sweater? Uh, well, it depends on the sweater, but um, adding sleeves to anything, if you're gonna continue with the pattern, then um, if you haven't got the side seams of the sweater sewn up, then you can do the same thing that I'm doing here. You just build the sleeve as one giant rectangle off the edge, so equidistant across the shoulder seam, build the sleeve back and forth. The primrose stitch works like this one. It's sort of a row of shell stitch and then a row of pico. Um, so you would just work the same pattern back and forth, back and forth, just like you were making a little miniature blanket built off the edge of your sweater. Um, and then same thing, you can just sort of cinch the bottom into with a little bit of trim. And when I say cinch, I mean you're, you're you know, kind of working a row of decrease around the edge of your sleeve. And you can do that any way you want. You can skip a stitch, you can crochet a couple stitches together, you, you know, like it's it's entirely up to you and entirely up to the, the, the way you want the look to be around the edge of your, your cardigan. But um, yeah, if it's a primrose stitch sweater, and you haven't sewn up the side seams, just do it like a tri like a rectangle. If you have sewn up the side seams and you just have an armhole, well, then you're just working in that pattern in the round. So a row of, of shell stitch in the round, join, slip stitch into the middle shell. So if you've got three double crochets in a shell, you slip stitch into the middle one and then start your pico up here and keep going. You're just working, you just transition from working back and forth to working that in the round. If you've already got your side seams all stitched up. Um, but if you're making it in panels, it's just so much easier to make any sweater from the, if you're new to making sweaters, it's really easy to make a sweater in panels, like rectangles or squares. Oh my gosh, Rebecca, thank you. Thank you so much for picking up a pattern. And I recommend making the first few sweaters you of your life <laughs> in that method, because it's just easier. Um, top down are really, are really nice too. Like if you, um, uh, if you want to make start with like the circular part of your neck and work down in um oh the word escapes me at the moment but it's like a th those top down sweaters where you start at the neck and then you work out this the to the shoulders and then you break for the armholes and you work down like sort of in a tube format that's like classic knitting golly that's really easy too um so you can you can do any one you want but so but if you do the 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 top down version you're gonna end up more likely with a sweater tube which doesn't have seams which is great but that gives you armholes in which case if you're putting on sleeves you've got to work in the round you can work back and forth turning it every and then and then just seam up the bottom like you're oh, basically creating a tube working back and forth and then you have a seam but it's just if you want the seamless look you just work in a in the round can both you, are um, correct answer chris's question or are you doing that right now um where <laughs> uh chris asks jada can you repeat again about the end of the beginning of row i'm confused start with a shell end with a shell and then start the next row with a post yeah so a post in this case great question if you're uh every other row in the straight granny shell stitch starts and ends with a shell the the rows in between start with what i call a post the post is a double crochet or a chain three because I'm using the shell chain one stitch, as opposed to just shell, 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 I chain four at the beginning of a post row, and that counts as a double crochet, chain one, and then I hop over top of that shell, and then I start with a full shell in the next chain one space. And then I end the row with a double crochet in the top of the last stitch of the previous row's shell. So I'm about to do that, I've just finished a row with a shell. It began with a shell, so three double crochet, three double crochet. So the post row, what I call the post row, starts with a post, which is a chain three or a double crochet. So I would chain three, but because I'm creating chain one spaces on top of all of my shells, I just chain four. That counts as a double crochet, chain one. I turn my work. And like I said, we've got a tutorial on this, so it's a little easier to see and a little more concise. I skip over that shell and I go to the next space and then I just work three double crochet. Chain one, and then it's just a shell in every stitch all the way across. So there's my post to start the row, a chain three, 
plus a chain one or chain four, double crochet, chain one. And then I finish my last shell in the last space, three double crochet, chain one, and then I will double crochet in the top of that last stitch. And that gives me that pattern all the way down the edge. Yeah. Um, we'll make sure that straight granny shell stitch video tutorial is linked somewhere in the description box once this becomes a regular video. So if you need to, you can pop over and check that out. It's a, a really great stitch. It is so darn useful, especially if you're, if you want to mix it in with granny squares. Couple more rows in here take another couple of measurements <laughs> for those of you that see royal blue and not purple i guess you could picture it uh, it pretty much looks like the color of grape grape flavor grape packaging yeah whatever. like it's candy great. candy colored grape that's what the yarn actually looks like um some people's tvs are showing it as um navy blue but that's it could funny. also be like our <laughs> our camera or lighting um, but anyway, yeah, so it's like a, it's like tang, grape tang or whatever. It's, you know, that color. Yeah. Kool-Aid. Um, I think I saw Don may have asked earlier if we had a, a video tutorial on a makeup bag. Um, and I wouldn't say we have a tutorial specifically on a makeup bag, but we do have, um, tutorials on, um, pencil cases, which is essentially the exact same thing. They're all about the same size. And we even have one on putting in a zipper. Um, it's older um, and it's a cute little bunny. <laughs> of course, you can leave off the ears and the face if you wanted to, uh, but it's a really simple, quick way to make a uh, make a bag or, or a pencil case and to add in a, a zipper. Welches, that's the word I was trying to think of, yeah, crocus. It looks like the Welch's mm -hmm. color packaging. Very deep, rich, grapey color. All right. How many rows am I up to here? I'll finish. I keep saying, oh, I'll finish the row and measure. And then I get into the habit of crocheting. So I will definitely finish this row and then measure. <laughs> oh, it's blustery out there. I see a little scrap of blue sky, mostly cloud. is very meditative I am sure like that's been said about three billion times today alone but <laughs> I would love to know maybe this should be a poll when those of you who get into sort of sit down and do a little crochet and you're not doing anything but crochet do you find it's kind of a like does it put you in what we call our nothing box you know that part of your brain just sort of slips away and stops thinking is crochet do you find crochet like that? Does it calm your brain or does it excite your brain? Mister, you want to do a poll? Um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I want to do that. Yeah, of course. <laughs> of course we'll do a poll. <laughs> Coffee just kicked in like that second. <laughs> Show! 
Whoa! And we have a milestone from Shell. Hi, Shell! Member for 58 months at Silk. Goodness gracious, right from the beginning. Thank you, Shell. I took Mom's granny cardigan to her, yay, and made a couple of alterations after she tried it on. Now it will fit her beautifully. Sleeves are next. Nicely done. Like we said, you can you 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 just want to keep trying these things on, and if you've got the model you're making it for handy, even better. That's <laughs> okay, wonderful. What was that pull you wanted? Um, does crochet make you feel? It was like calm versus stimulated yeah. or something like that. Yeah, okay. because I, I feel like sometimes it really puts me, or both, Jessica says, add a both option. Okay, we'll do All that. All right, we'll add a both option, Jessica <laughs> Rabbit. <laughs> No, actually, it was a different Jessica. Oh, okay. I thought Jessica Rabbit was trolling me again. No, she's still trolling you. It's just a different way. It's just constant trolling with her. I've got five and a half inches so far of sleeve made. Um, so this is, this is good. So let's fold it in half and take a look at it. Top down view. Oh, this is going to be so cute. So already I've got like a little short sleeve sweater going here. So there's my sweater side seam. Here's the sleeve so far. So here's my neck. This little guy's all twisted up. That's the front of my cardigan. So there's the neck. None of my tails are woven in. So this is the front so far, looking good, looking good. I've got my side seam and my sleeve starting. Now the sleeve's gonna go quite a bit further, but ultimately it's going to terminate in these two granny squares. So this will be like the big fancy kind of cuff edge at the bottom of my, my uh, cardigan sleeve. And then I'm gonna have trim along the edge. But I'm thinking before I get to here, I'm going to repeat this color striping before I get to the edge. So I'm gonna go all purple and then orange, black, or should I do black orange so it matches what's happening up top? Black, orange, and then two rows of purple and then the, 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 the squares. So, well, while you're thinking about your design, I would like to shout out Sherry for the super chat. Thank you, Sherry. And Nico for gifting a membership. Thank you, Nico. Sherry says, down with surgery number 13. I needed this. Thanks. Goodness gracious. Well, we're glad to know you're home and on the mend, Sherry. This is, uh, this is healing. Crochet is healing. It might be stimulating. It might be meditative. It might be both, but it's definitely healing. <laughs> Sylvia has won the membership, gifted by Nico. Thank you again, Nico, and congratulations, Sylvia. Welcome back to the family. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, so I'm going to continue with this. So let me think now. Um, if I'm gonna add in those two extra rows, this, these four rows, where's my little measuring tape? I'm gonna mimic this color patterning in the bottom of the sleeve. So I need at least four rows. That's two and a half inches. So I'm aiming for 16 inches of sleeve before I get to my square. Two and a half inches equals four rows. I'm already at five and a half inches and that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 rows. So five and a half plus two and a half would be eight. I'm going for 16. So I need to do, well, this is almost six inches. You know what? I'm going to call that six inches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten rows is six inches. So I'm going to keep going for a while and then I will measure again. I want this to be a nice long sleeve, so I don't want to skimp out on it. Got to the end already turned it so I'll just chain four turn and zip backwards this is part four of the booby <laughs> cardigan <laughs> construction using granny squares and now a significant amount of straight granny shell stitch. The idea behind this series, uh, obviously over and above just hanging out, 
um, with everybody and chit-chatting about our favorite thing, crochet, um, is to sort of watch the construction of a sweater or cardigan using granny squares right from scratch. I want to take you all through how I plan out a wearable when I'm trying to you know, use existing things that I have. And in this case, it was a bunch of existing granny squares. And we've also sort of talked about how you can, you can plan it out from scratch. So if you are curious about the previous few granny square sweater live streams we've done, we've got a, a playlist going now. Um, and you can kind of just, if you can sit and listen to the whole thing, obviously, if you want, kind of like a podcast, or you can sort of zip through fast forward through them. You can play them sped up if you want. Um, maybe mute them <laughs> so I don't sound like a chipmunk. <laughs> um, but uh, you can sort of just see the whole thing coming together um, on camera. And if there's any sort of specific area that you're kind of curious about or you've got questions about, hopefully we've covered it. So we've talked about measurements. We've talked about how to use granny squares, how to plan out the granny squares, how to figure out how much yarn you need and so on. And uh, this is also fun too. We're going to be adding appliques. We're just going to have a whole bunch of fun with this. So I have a, a miniature announcement oh. for everyone that's here hanging out. Um, I have transferred a copy of the Granny Square game onto our website. Oh yeah. So we have the app for those of you that like to use the app. It's good for like small devices like your phone. Uh, but now we've put it on the website too. So. It kind of it's you're able to sort of see it on a bigger screen, um, whether it's your television or your computer or your tablet. So um, it's there and it's free. It's for anyone who wants to use it. Um, I'm in the middle of putting it together, so there might be some wonkiness. I'd love some feedback uh, if anyone uses it. So I'm gonna put a link. You need a link to get to it. So I'm gonna put a link in the chat. If anyone's interested, you can um, give it a try. Oh my goodness, Pamela, thank you. Pamela's picked up a pattern from our Etsy shop. That reminds me, everybody, if you're just dropping by, we're having a store-wide sale, 10% off everything in the store at our Etsy shop today. And <laughs> our little tiny treats amigurumi pattern is 50% off because I'm making candy corn buttons <laughs> for this sweater. Every time I pick these up, my face like <laughs> crinkles into a giant grin. <laughs> They're just so darn cute. Um, I can't wait to use these as buttons. I just, I feel like, I feel like this is the kind of, of detail that you can make for a sweater. Even, you know, like we, we've got, um, you could make little, uh, we've got a, a wizard pattern uh, in the tiny treat form that if you swapped out the colors, he would make an adorable little Santa. And I'm just thinking if you're making yourself an ugly uh, Christmas sweater and you're looking, or a cardigan, and you're looking to make buttons for it, our little um, tiny treat wizard, which is part of that 50% off pattern. There's five of these little patterns in there. Just swap out the colors for red and you've got, <laughs> you've got a Santa and you'd have little Santa buttons that you made all the way up and down your cardigan. No one else is going to have those. Talk about a conversation starter. I just, <laughs> now I'm going to have to make some of those for an ugly Christmas sweater. Oh my gosh. This is why I love crochet i love being able to make my own thing but then just go so far off the page <laughs> hey i need to make some buttons hey why don't i just crochet them okay what do you want to crochet oh my gosh well the sky's the limit what colors do i want to do what shape do i want to do and since we're working with sort of a, a halloweeny theme here um the candy corns are great and that was deanna's suggestion last week <laughs> i love that idea and since I can't go out and find any ready-made ones, I'm just going to make my own. Thank you very much. Sleeve is growing. just realized look how look how stunning those are going to look because there there's going to be more trim down the front of my cardigan because I have to create 
buttonholes and a place to sort of like a panel for the buttons to sit on. And this is another reason I think that the candy corns are going to work so well with this because there's going to be so much more purple in this cardigan than I originally anticipated, which is great. So they really stand out and it's just, <laughs> they're, just they're just so cute. Oh my gosh. All right. All right. I'm going to get over the buttons. I promise. <laughs> um, I'm going to end the poll. Okay. Marie says, Jada, is there a way to make lollipop buttons? Marie, we've actually got a pattern in our Etsy shop for little uh, little candies. Um, they include little lollipops. You can vary the size of them depending on the hook and yarn you choose. And you can make them a little bigger or a little smaller. So yeah, absolutely there's a way to make lollipop buttons. How darn cute would that be? Does crochet make you feel calm? 49%. Both. 48%. Stimulated. 1%. Okay. That's, that's fascinating to me. So half of you feel calm and half of you feel kind of like it could go either way, I suppose, depending on what you're working on. I, I feel I might fit into the both category because frequently if I'm crocheting, I do calm down. I, you know, if I'm working on something nice and gentle and repetitive, like it can put me in my little nothing box and I'm quite happy, but possibly more often than not, like with this kind of a, a like a project, it inspires future projects or the project itself keeps becoming more and more interesting as I work on it. And that I find quite stimulating. So I guess I fall into the both category. This is going to be such a nice sleeve. Mister, I'm so glad that you made coffee. Be honest. Isn't that probably one of the best cups of coffee you've ever had in your life? Like today, maybe? Hey. <laughs> it's very good. It's pretty good. It's strong. Heart buttons would be an amazing idea. We've got, um, that's Chris asking. Chris, we've got so many heart patterns, but I would say um, our little, like for a button size, we've got a little heart applique. It's one of the earliest videos we did and we did and we redid it back in 2017. So we have a newer little heart applique. Two of those stitched together with a little itty bitty bit of stuffing would be about the perfect heart size. They'd be just a little bit smaller or maybe maybe about the size, but like differently shaped than this one, which you can see fits in the palm of my hand. Um, so, and it's just like all the other patterns, you can vary the size by changing the weight of the yarn and the hook size. So if you wanted something like super small, you could go with like a fingering weight yarn and a much smaller hook, like a two and a half millimeter or something. Um, yeah. You know what? Honestly, we've got so many simple shaped um, appliques that two of them stitched together would make like a, a really cute little, I'm thinking of the stars. We've got hearts. We've got stars. We've got all of the little tiny treats. We've got, um, oh, what are some of the other simple ones we've done? Simple and small brains for oh we've got sunflowers we've got little pumpkins um oh my gosh little pumpkins little pumpkins would be so cute uh you could even take our ghost applique and size it down using a smaller hook and fingering weight yarn and have little um little pac-man style ghost buttons or you could use the tiny treat ghost that we did and have have these this little shaped um ghost <laughs> button oh my gosh Apples, apples. Um, Sylvia, we've got we've got a larger apple pattern applique, hmm, but not a small one. That would be cute. Little apples. We, I, I think we've got an apple applique pattern that's basically the size of a coaster. Um, so that one, even sized down, might be a little bit too big still. Have to make a smaller one. But you know what? You could basically take the pumpkin, the little pumpkin applique pattern that we did for our folk art granny square, 
and use red or green and then brown for the stem and that would basically look like an apple for sure. So yes, you could use that pumpkin, that little pumpkin applique pattern from the folk art calendar blanket and instead of making it orange, make it red or green and there's your apple. That would be just adorable. Oh, we even have acorns. Oh my gosh. We have little we have a tutorial for little acorns and they're not they're not 2D, they're 3D little acorns. Little acorns would be the cutest little buttons too. That would be so fallish. Oh my Okay, brain is on overdrive today. Yeah, this is definitely not a calm crochet. You're going to have to make 50 different sweaters now. <laughs> all different themes, all different fall themes. All different fall themes. Um, if anyone is looking for a specific pattern that Jada may or may not have out there, the best thing to do is go to the to our YouTube channel homepage, go to the search bar and search for that item specifically. So put in heart or acorn or you know hat, and um, everything will pop up. The other way to do it is to just go to Google, type in Jada in stitches, and then the item you're looking for, and it should also pop up. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, and the sun, Tanya just mentioned the sun. We've got a little sun applique too. Uh, two of those would make a cute little, oh my gosh, that'd be cute. Yes, we've got several iterations actually of a little sun. We've got a little sun applique. Um, we've got a few iterations of that. We've got a regular applique. We've got one where we turned it into a pendant for a necklace. So you can sort of see the sizing up and sizing down of that pattern. Um, that would be really cute. It's got a lot of little like sun rays though. So I wonder if those would, would kind of move around a little too much. I'm thinking That's that the sunflower. That's a great sunflower... idea from Jessica. You could also make the buttons interchangeable. Yes, yes. That's a great idea. Nico! Nico! <laughs> Thank you, Nico. Another gifted membership. And Kim won it. Hey, fantastic. Welcome back to the family, Kim. How many cats do you think I scared off with that? <laughs> I don't know. Okay, where is my measuring tape? How are we doing? Eight and a half inches. Okay, so eight and a half and two and a half would bring me up to 13. So I've got a few more rows of purple to do before I switch to the color striping pattern. Ah, it's coming together. It's coming together. Let's see how quickly I can do these few rows. <laughs> <laughs> oh a mushroom on the back of the sweater that'd be cute susan i think i think that would actually suit a lot of fall sweaters i'm gonna try and stick to just the the the, the ghosts and the bees for this one <laughs> I've already kind of launched into candy corn territory. Mr. and Stitch is busy scaring everybody's I, I'm pets. I'm calling all the animals, all the animals from the animal kingdom to the television. <laughs> They're all coming to investigate or some are running away, I think. Nice and simple stitch. Solid color is kind of fun. So the sleeves look a little more, a little, the sleeves look a little less chaotic.
All right. The sleeve is getting nice and long. I gotta remember too that it's gonna stretch a little bit, so I might not have to go as far down as I think. And I might just take a second to try it on just to make sure that it's starting and finishing where I think it's going to. Take my own advice, pause and try it on. So I will finish this row and I will step away from the craft table for a second and I will just try it on. I'm wearing kind of a, a thin-ish thin -ish sweater at the moment. Um, so I'm really just, I'm just sort of draping it over my body to, to sort of see where the sleeve starts and finishes. That'll just give me an idea of maybe how many rows left I need to do in the sleeve. Um, and I encourage you guys to do that if you're kind of making it for yourself. Like if you don't, if you want a really specific sleeve length, then it's really good to keep trying something on and measuring it because um, sometimes, sometimes things may look right and not fit properly and they may look wrong but fit properly so uh, you know it's kind of it's, it's almost like the same I don't know if any of you find this but sometimes you go to the store and it might you might find a piece of clothing hanging on this on a, a, a rack that looks really cute but then you try it on and you're like yeah no and then other times you might see something you're thinking well I don't know that doesn't really look amazing and then you try it on you're like I look fantastic in this so it's the same thing when you're making yourself clothing Okay, I'm going to pull up on my loop. Give me one second, guys. I'm just going to try this on by draping it over my shoulders. And uh, we'll see how long that sleeve is. Okay, what are we dealing with here? So I'm going to make sure... I know you can't see what I'm doing. I'm just going to tell you what I'm doing. I've got my... I've made sure that I've got my seam between the, my shoulder seam running right down the top of my sleeve or right over my shoulder and that ends about where I thought it was going to and that goes so right now it goes down to my elbow so I've made it all the way down to my elbow let me just grab one of my things here and I'm going to do another four rows that's basically what I want to do so I'm going to start the striping pattern I think right now because I don't want this to be too too long and it's going to stretch out on me a little bit she says, nattering away off camera. Okay. So basically, what I did was I just draped it over my body. This is my shoulder seam. I made sure that it ran right down the top of my shoulder. My sleeve starts here, and this edge, the end of my sleeve, ends right at my elbow right now. So I like that. I'm going to start the color patterning uh, effect that I did on the front of the sweater. And I think because I'm going in this direction, I'm going to do a row of black, then a row of orange, and then two rows of purple so that it matches sort of going in the same direction out the sleeve. Joanna, membership milestone, a member for 20 months. Thank you, Joanna. Love the live streams and the crochet ideas. Well, that's what we're here for, guys. We're here for fun, inspiration, some friendly company while we crochet. Thank you guys for being here so much. Thank you, Mr. and Stitches, for the amazing coffee. <laughs> There's more where that came from. If yes, you I want will it. definitely have another cup of that. Um, okay, so I'm going to change colors. So I'm going to snip my yarn and fasten off my purple. And let me just see. Final tally. I'm going to make some notes over here. So I'm going to switch to... Oh. Thank you, sir. So fastening off my purple, I'm gonna make a note. How many sleeve rows did I do? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Wow, 17, okay. Making a note. So I do the same thing on the other side, 17 rows. I did 17 rows of the straight stitch in purple. Now I'm going to go with black. So I'm switching to black for one row, then orange for one row, and then back to purple. You want? Oh, good thing you Where announced you your going? arrival. You could, I almost, have you could have knocked me right that over. That was almost a disaster. Where do you put it? Here? Yep, right there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm just grabbing my black yarn. 
Good, uh, good waiter in this craft room. I heard that. <laughs> okay. All right, I'm going to do a row of black. So let's see, that row ended with a post. So this row end, uh, starts with a shell. So I'll just join with a slip stitch, nice and simple. Chain three to begin, two more double crochet in the same space. That's my shell to start. We've got a membership milestone from Maeve. Member for five months, thank you Maeve. Maeve says, really enjoy all you do. Really grateful to all of the free memberships that I've received. Keep it up, thank you for being here. This is such a sweet community. I've never looked forward to Mondays in my life, and I do now. So I'm kind of hoping that our schedule um, maintains the Monday uh, being available, because I really like hanging out with everybody on a Monday. It makes it, it makes Mondays a lot less dreary. <laughs> so shell, chain one, shell, chain one. Nice row of black all the way across. And then I will switch to orange for a row and then back to purple for two. And then I'm going to join these two granny squares. This is fun. This is fun sleeve construction. I'm just trying to use what I've got. Um, I, I, this whole sweater project really started with me wanting to use these purple granny squares up into something. I wasn't really sure what I was going to use them for. I've had them kind of kicking around the craft room for several years now. And I really, really wanted to just get them used up and because and, I love them. I love that they're purple and they're a bit kind of funny looking. And I've been wanting to make a granny square cardigan forever, but I didn't really feel like sitting down and crocheting a whole whack of squares. So I thought, well, let me see what I can do with the ones I've got on hand. And here we are. Lori, Lori with a membership milestone. Lori has been a silk member for 31 months. Thank you so much, Lori. Yay, I finally caught a live stream. It has been months. I love you guys. Hey, Lori, we're glad you could catch one. Live and thriving on a Monday. All right, that is a row of black. Fasten off. I am not worrying about any of my tails. I'm gonna weave them all in later. Turn work. And let's do a row of orange. Woohoo! So, previous row started and ended with a shell. This row begins and ends with a post. I'm gonna. Don't really like the standing double crochet. I feel like it's just always a little bit loose. So, chain three and then chain one more. That's double crochet, chain one, and then. Off I go, shell, chain one, shell, chain one, all the way across. So I'm mimicking that color striping that I used at the front of the cardigan. So that will be echoed in the sleeve. Mm, yes, yes, yes. I am motivated to finish this sleeve today so that I can go ahead and make the second one. And then the next, the next live stream should be trimming buttons, I would think, and then we should be all done with this sweater construction. And then we'll be moving on to other fun little things.
Okay, that is my stripe of orange. Ends with a post, so that's a double crochet in the top of the last stitch. And I'll fasten off that, and then I'm back to purple for a couple rows. Sylvia! Sylvia with a membership milestone. Sylvia's been a member for two months at the Silk Level. Thank you, Sylvia. Sylvia says, thank you to Nico for the free membership. So happy to be proud of the part of the community. And I'm <laughs> so happy to be proud of the community. Well, I'm happy you're proud of our community too, Sylvia. <laughs> I'm just glad you're all here. Thank you so much. Yes, Nico is incredibly generous. I know a lot of you are um, enjoying being a member. Thanks to Nico. And I just think that's wonderful that so many of you gonna get to join in on all the extra fun. But uh, if you're here and you're watching and you're subscribed, or if you're just here and lurking, we're just happy to have you. So thank you so much for being being along for this crazy wooly journey. Now why did this, aha, not actually a knot, just a twist. Here we go, back to purple. So I'm gonna do two rows of purple now, kind of like I did at the front of the sweater. Again, not caring about weaving in my tails or anything. I'm just going to worry all about that later. And then I'm going to add my granny squares to the bottom. So that's going to be cool. Sylvia, I'm on coffee number like five and I could probably drink an entire pot and I would still sound some days like I, I just woke up. <laughs> Jessica Rabbit with the Golden Girls theme song. Probably one of the best television shows ever made. I love that show. And I was a kid when that was on. Jada and I have been discussing for years, why is it that the show The Golden Girls appealed to young, to kids? Yes. Because we were all kids watching it, and we all enjoyed it. And I'm like, why? I was like... Wasn't it about three retired ladies? <laughs> yeah, and, 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 and her mom, you know? <laughs> and, her, and their mom, yeah. Oh my goodness gracious, Angela! Angela, with a purchase at the Etsy shop. Thank you, Angela! I loved the Golden Girls and I think I was like, I mean, when I say kid, I mean under the age of 10 when that was on. So yeah, why was that such an appealing show? Me, all my friends watched it. We all loved it. There's an idea from Tanya. Uh, Tanya says it's because we wanted our grannies to be that awesome. Maybe. Yeah, that's a good point. I have to say both my grannies were pretty awesome. If anyone has any ideas as to why it appealed to all ages, throw them in the chat. I had one granny who did spend her, her uh, winters, uh, gram, grandma and grandpa, they spent their winters in, in Florida. So that kind of was a bit of a connection, I guess. Um, and my other grandparents were just fun. They were kind of <laughs> goofballs. <laughs> Yes, this, this is going to be cute. Okay, so I've made a fairly longish sleeve with the purple. Then I added in the same color stripe pattern that we used at the front. So that will echo the front panel of this cardigan. And then I'm going to join the granny squares. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to seam together the two granny squares that I'm using at the bottom of the sleeve, then I'm going to join them. And I'm trying to decide if I'm going to crochet them in or sew them in. I will not cut my connecting purple yarn here just in case I decide to sew them in. So once again, I am kind of constructing this as I go, which I like. It all depends on 
how I see, because I could do a join as you go. I could do a join as you go. I could do a join as you go. Oh my gosh. Okay. Pulling up on the tail. So this is the sleeve so far. Now I've got to seam together two of my granny squares. This is going to be the um, the cuff at the bottom. This is going to be the back of the sleeve. This is going to be the front of the sleeve. I'm going to seam them together the same way I did with all the other grannies. Um, so that is about that much up and then about that much back. I'm going to do that cross stitch join, which is just so darn fun. So in the bottom hole on one side, leave a little tail skip up to the middle stitch of the shell on the other side and then through the hole, the next hole on the other side. So I'm going to do a nice big zigzagging whip stitch all the way up one side. Cross over at the top and start coming back down the other way. So let's tighten this up a little bit. Okay, so looks good, looks good. So now it spaces here and stitches on this side. Oh, this is such a fun join. It is so fun. When you want your join to really stand out, and let's face it, this is fast. Um, this cross stitch thing really gives it that kind of I want to say like a scarecrow kind of look, but so I'm just going to pull this up through here. So I have one looping, just a connector at this. That gives me a little something to sew through or to crochet through if I'm on my way back across it at some point. So there we go. I'll just knot these two ends together, weave them in later. There we go. That's not going to go anywhere. Nice and tight. So that's the cross, oh, just, I can't get enough of that. That is just so darn cute. Okay, back to the sleeve. So, joining options. Got a zillion of them. I am going to join this sleeve. So you see how the two squares are shorter than this because I made this a little bit longer because I wanted a, a slightly wider sleeve. So I'm gonna just basically cinch this in or gather, that's the proper term. I'm gonna gather this sleeve edge to match this edge. But because we're crocheting and we're not sewing, I don't have to run a stitch through this and gather it like I would be if I'm sewing. I can just stitch it. I can decide where I want the gather to show up as I'm stitching. So I can sew this in or I can crochet this in. Nico, <laughs> gosh, Nico. Nico with another gifted membership. Thank you so much. Myra has won it. Welcome to the family, Myra. Sip of coffee. Cheers to Nico. All right, now if I join, I can do a row of join as you go. I can single crochet this together. I can slip stitch this together. I could even do some kind of, I could also just whip stitch it together. So I could, I could leave myself a long tail and just stitch it together. I'm trying to decide what will look right with this. So if this is all just neatly joined, cinched together here, Join as you go would probably be eh, single crochet, slipping, da, da, da. you know what, I think I'm going to, just to keep this a little more like an even flow, I'm going to whip stitch it. Also that'll give me some control over where I decide to do my gathering. So I want to make sure that this and this are even, and that leaves me with I think an extra shell to just kind of gather together. So all I'm going to do, let's see, that's one, two, three, four, six stitches, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten extra stitches. So I'm going to evenly space out the use of ten of these stitches, and stitches can be the chain that's in that runs across a space or any of the double crochets. So five on each side. I'm going to evenly space out using, as I sew, I'll be using one of the, I'll be using five on each square twice. So like I might, I might whip stitch through say this stitch twice, joining two different stitches to it. And that will just 
gather my sleeve in nice and neatly. I'll show you what I'm doing here. So let's go. I'm going to fasten off and use this as a sewing tail. Uh, that'll probably be enough. I'll do a double just to be on the safe side. So fasten off, long tail, and let me make sure that I've got the right side of my sweater showing. So I want to make sure that all of my, so this is the right side of my sweater. That's the right side of my sleeve. This is the right, see, these are the wrong side of my squares. This is the right side of my squares. I wanna make sure that the right sides of everything are facing in the same direction. So, because I'm right-handed, I wanna sew the other way. I'm gonna flip everything over. So now I'm looking at the wrong side of my sweater. That's the wrong side. Oh, I gotta make sure that I'm going, where's the front? I wanna make sure that this one is on the front of my sleeve. It's like if you've ever done any woodworking, you've probably heard the comment, measure twice, cut once. It's also good for fabric, yarn, etc. Before you start stitching or joining, double check. <laughs> double check that everything's going in the right place. So this is the front of my sweater. This is the right side facing out. This is the armpit. This is the sleeve so far. Gosh, this is cute. And now this is going to be the little bit of sleeve edging. This is going to get cinched into it. So I've got a, a granny square at the edge. This is the front, right side facing. This is the front. So just to make sure there is no confusion. No, this is the back. That's the front, right side facing. I need the front, right side facing, the front, right side facing. And just so while I'm spinning stuff around, nothing gets lost, I'm going to just pin this together okay so this is gonna be so cute oh my gosh and then right down to a little a little cuff Good question, Tanya. Tanya asks, what's the oldest work in progress sitting in everybody's closet? Ooh, that's a good one. I have a, so I'm gonna sew, it doesn't matter which side I sew through because I'm using the whip stitch, but I just wanted to make sure that everything was, everything was where I needed it to be. So now I'm looking at the inside of my sweater. Everything's pinned together and here I go. Where's my little sewing needle? I've already lost it and I haven't even started. Sewing needle, where'd you go? Hmm. See, this is why it's good to pin. Now I've lost my sewing needle and I'm gonna be shuffling everything around trying to find that. <laughs> Where did that go? Where did that go? Where did that go? Is it caught up in this somehow? Those are my things. What the heck did I do with my sewing needle? All right, stand up, see if it falls out. Oh, here it is, got it, on the floor. Okay, um, I have a work in progress in my cupboard that is, when did we do the Mario Graf Gan, sweetie? Do you remember, um, is that 2015? I would say somewhere around 2014-ish. 2014, 2015, 2014, somewhere 2015? in there. Maybe, so eight years? Oh my gosh, yeah. So I started one, I think the same year. Oh yeah. And I still don't I have all the that. squares made for it. You still have the pieces for it? I, I still have the pieces, but uh -huh. I don't have all the squares. That's the super secret, secret project. Yes. I haven't finished that one yet. Okay, so I'm just, <laughs> I'm gonna whip stitch this together and I wanna evenly space five on this side and five on this side, stitches that I use twice. And I'll show you, show you what I mean. So I'm gonna use, let's say, this stitch twice. So I'm going to pair up this stitch and this stitch, just like I'm, I'm just sewing along. Am I already out of sync? I might be. How many have I done here? All right. 
So I'm going to use, I'm pairing, I'm just doing a usual whip stitch. So I'm pairing up stitches as I go. And usually if your pieces that you're sewing together are matched stitch for stitch, you would just pair it up, sew through or crochet through each matched set of stitches all the way across. But because this is a smaller edge than this is, I want to gather as I crochet or as I sew. So I'm going to use this stitch on my square side twice. So I've used it once and now I'm going to go into the next stitch on this side, but use this stitch again. And I'm going to do that nine more times all the way across, five on this side, five on this side, and I'm going to evenly space them. And that will just naturally gather in one, two, three, four, five. I have five shells, so I'm going to put one in the middle of every single shell and that will evenly space those little gathers. And uh, the bottom of the sleeve that I crocheted will fit neatly into, it'll kind of gather ever so gently into the edge of my granny squares. So I like that. And then I'm going to pause halfway through to make sure I'm not gathering too much. So I've done it again. And I've opted for the whip stitch because I realized that this will be a very um, hard to see join. And I don't really want to join, I don't want to draw attention to the join between the sleeve and the granny squares because I'm doing some gathering. Helps that everything's the same color. using that stitch twice. Now I might not do one here because I've got this little extra stuff, but let me get halfway through and make sure. That's another thing you can kind of, if you're doing a little gathering as you sew, you get to just stop regularly and see where you're at to make sure that you're not gathering too much or too little. I think I can take these out now. So this is the halfway mark. I want to make sure that the halfway mark of my sleeve is evenly matched up with the halfway mark of the seam because that's this whole piece is exact middle and it looks like I'm on track. So maybe one, two, three, one more little gather here. Oops. I want to try and get the whole stitch. When in doubt, just pull it out. There we go. I'm going to use that one once more. There we go. And then the corner and that's the middle. And I'm going to use the actual seam edge. There we go. And now I'm on to the next side. And I will start gathering on this side. And you can see, so there's, there's half my sleeve stitched together. And you can see that now it's been gathered. So the edges are the same. And you can't even, because I'm whip stitching, you can't even really see the gathering. It's going to be very subtle. So it's basically going to create a tapered sleeve edge. Absolutely awesome technique. Um, so if you're trying to match up things like a wider sleeve to smaller cuffs, that's how you do it. And it's almost impossible to see. So I'm going to do a gathering here. I'll use this stitch twice. And I'll do a little gathering here. So I'll use that stitch twice. So I'm making sure that I don't miss any stitches. I'm not 
skipping any. I'm, I'm making sure I get every single chain stitch and double crochet, like the tops of those stitches, all the way across. So I'm not missing any, so I won't have any gaps. But every so often, I use up a stitch on this side twice. I sew through the same stitch twice. Um, and that is what's creating that little gather, nice and neat. So I've got, looks like one more gather to do. And this should probably work out pretty neatly. Let's see here. That's the top, that's the top. And that's the top, okay. So, sewing together the tops of the last two stitches, which just happen to be chain threes. So I wanna make sure. <laughs> All right. So I'm gonna just Bring this back down here, make a little knot, weave in, I will weave in this particular tail. And I'm just gonna weave in what's left underneath that row of stitching. I am looking at the wrong side of the, or the inside of my sweater sleeve, so I'm gonna weave it in on this side. Mr. and Stitches, I hear you giggling. We have a poll going. Oh, <laughs> of course. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to wait till it gets to at least 100 votes, and then I will send it off to Jada. back now and that is the sleeve all right that is definitely not going to come out that is getting pretty firm so just trim whatever's left that goes in the scrap bin perfect all right so that is the sleeve all stitched together and now you can see from any angle that we do it I've gathered as I stitched the wider sleeve portion into the smaller sleeve portion. So let's just get this folded in half so you can sort of see it. Here's a good question for Jada. I have sure. this is from Leslie. So does the calendar blanket count as would you say the calendar blanket counts as a whip if that's something that you're working on? that you need to sort of wait till the end of the year to finish it? Oh, that's a really good question. Yeah. Um, it is technically a work in progress. Um, but. But you don't know how it's going to end. If you're doing the most recent one that comes out every month, is it? It's like one of those, um, you know, tree falling in the forest type of questions. That is that is a good question. Um, <laughs> I'd you know like what? to get everyone's opinion in the chat. I'm going to say that the calendar blanket is a work in progress because the year 2023 is a work in progress. It's not finished yet, but we know it's going to continue to unfold. What so, are you, a philosopher? Yes, I'm a philosopher. Uh -huh. <laughs> um. Granny, granny squares, so Crocus says granny square counts. Do, gran, do granny squares count as whips? I'm going to say no. If you've completed the granny square and you're just creating a stack of them 
in the corner, but they have no official purpose yet, like they're not going to be joined into a blanket or a bag or a sweater or something, then no, they're not a work in progress if the square itself is finished because you just made the square. And the square on its own is a finished thing until you've earmarked it for a project and then that project becomes the work in progress. <laughs> All right. Here are, here's the sleeve and the neck so far. This is the neck of the sweater. We haven't got all the extra trim on yet, so this is just sort of the build out from the last video. Our sleeve, or I should say our shoulder, our shoulder that runs into the sleeve. So you can see that sleeve starts, it's open, I haven't got the seam up yet. It terminates in this granny shell or a granny square cuff. There's gonna be a little bit extra trim on the end of the cuff to kind of, again, cinch it down a little bit more. And that is how the sleeve is looking. So I am quite pleased with that. Um, ignore all my little tails. I'll be weaving all those in later, obviously, and you won't see them. They won't be, uh, won't look so it's quite so messy, but I like that. So I've got a very, I've got a very nice solid purple sleeve and then a little bit of that trim that matches the same color patterning as the front and then it terminates in these two granny squares so that's another way I can use up a couple of those granny squares and it ties in the vest part of the cardigan so where all the actual granny square work is. So this is great. I'm going to call the cuff um, so the extra work I'm going to do down here is going to be part of the trim and we will be doing that in an upcoming live stream. Um, I'm going to do exactly this same thing on the other side of my sweater. So I'm going to do that off camera sometime this week. I'll get both my sweaters done. But then I will do the seaming and all of the extra trim plus adding the buttons um, probably on the next live stream. I would like to get this little project wrapped up um, on the next stream. So we'll see how that goes. Oh my gosh, this is going to be... I wonder if I should... I wonder if I should do one down here, like a little cuff link. <laughs> Don't forget, it's gonna need a a, a boo and a bee. Yeah, too, it's gonna right? need it's gonna need my little ghost and my little bee. So I might I might whip up the the ghost applique. Uh, we've got a tutorial for that. So if you want to see the uh, preview of that, uh, we'll link that in the description box below as well. Upcoming. Um, the only thing I'm left with is creating a little bee applique. I don't have one of those yet, so. Or would it be cute if I had a bee actually sitting up on my shoulder? Hmm. Oh, I like that idea. You could do the 3D one. The one we have the tutorial for. Yeah. Oh, that would be cute. A little bee up here sitting, sitting on my shoulder. Sitting on your shoulder. That's a great idea. Hmm. You can have the, the little devil and angel thing going. Yeah. The ghost will be uh, the devil and the bee will be the angel. <laughs> or vice sense. versa. <laughs> Depends on their personalities. Yeah, it does. It does. <laughs> this is going to be so cute. I guess my telling Jada to go get the snacks in the drawer. <laughs> there's chips, Jada. There's chips in the cupboard. <laughs> Mister and Stitches is 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 all the double I need in this house. I tell you. Oh my gosh. Okay, so that is sleeve number one. I'm going to do sleeve number two later. I will be adding buttons on an upcoming live stream. So you've seen how the sleeve is made. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do the second one on my own. You don't need to see that, I don't think. <laughs> Not again anyway. You can always watch this a second time, I guess, and pretend it's the other side of the sweater. <laughs> um, we've got a live stream and we have a tutorial for our little tiny treat, which I'll be modeling the buttons off of for this. So if you want to check that out, those links are in the description box already. And um, the pattern that we have for this, plus the other four, so all five of the Tiny Treats collection are one pattern. They include all five. It's 50% off. 50, 50% 50 off in our Etsy shop this week, uh, up till Thursday. So from today through Thursday. And the rest of the shop is on 10% off until Thursday. So um, since you're here, you know about the sale. It's kind of like insider knowledge. <laughs> So if there's anything you want to pick up, feel free to pop over and do that. And we very much appreciate the support because it does help us keep going. It is, uh, it is not, not, um, not the same as it used to be here on YouTube. It's getting, it's getting harder and harder to kind of keep doing this show and <laughs> finding the time to do it. Um, so I'm really appreciative that you guys could make it today and that so many of you were here and to be supportive. Um, either just by hanging out, hitting the like button, subscribing, 
hitting the uh, the share button, joining as a member and picking up a pattern. We really appreciate all of it because it helps us tremendously. So thank you guys. I hope you've all been enjoying this sweater construction. I've been having so much fun making this cardigan and it's not over yet. So we'll be live streaming again and we will continue with this project until it's done. And uh, I hope you guys had fun with us today. We will see you soon. Mr. Stitches, is there anything you'd like to add? Um, we're all going to wish Cherry B a happy birthday oh, happy for birthday, tomorrow. Cherry. So happy birthday. Did you have a poll going? Uh, I have a poll going. We'll end the poll and then we'll wrap it up. Okay. Okay. So here it comes. Put my little stitch markers away. Oh, this is so cute. So cute. So cute. So cute. How big is your WIP? Your whip pile? Not too bad. 39%. It's bigger than I like. 36%. I have to move out of my house. 50%. Whip pile? 7%. I have a handful. I always think that I've managed to get them all done. And then I find another one. In fact, I did find another one. Um, in the closet it's a blanket that actually i'm now that i think about it it might be even older than my my graph gan i don't know uh i might even just take it out at this point i might fling that pattern as opposed to finishing it so i might just take it apart and put all that yarn back in the stash for use later but we shall see everybody thank you so much for hanging out i hope you had uh fun in today's little cozy kick off the, the the crochet cozy season it's the fall that rolled in this past weekend and i think making a granny square sweater is just the perfect way to celebrate that um coffee <laughs> we'll see you soon here we've got something lined up for you this week we're still working on our fall schedule and um we haven't even taken our summer vacation yet we're still working out when we can squeeze that in so we'll keep you guys posted uh don't worry keep an eye on the community post tab that's where we put most of our announcements and stuff and uh, we'll see you soon here on the Jada and Stitches show. Thanks for hanging out.